everyone. Welcome to BWD TV. My name is Eden Turner. I'm a conference producer for Bioprocess International and I am joined today by Henrik Eira. He is the Global Director of Strategic Customer Relations at Cytiva. Welcome Henrik. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, I'm just going to kick it off with the questions. So uh, I hear that you are responsible for Cytiva's uh, custom consumables offering for been being offered for more than 10 years. Um, can you tell us a bit more about what that offering consists of uh, and how that has evolved in the last decade? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and thank you for having me. Okay. So I've been with a company for actually more than 20 years in different positions and R&D product management. And as you mentioned, I was heading up the custom consumable business for about 11 years. And Initially, that's a business that started back in the 1980s, and then I think this whole bioprocessing industry was quite immature, and uh, what we could offer them was really sort of customized solutions around uh, chromatography resins that are designed for, you know, purification of different uh, proteins or recombinant proteins. And then over the years, that's been sort of expanding in from one business being the, the chromatography resins to also one group doing or offering customization around uh, small prepack columns. Uh, we have another group uh, which could do customization around prepacked ready to process columns. And these are columns more uh, designed or developed for clinical manufacturing or large scale manufacturing. And then we have a fourth group uh, that's uh, devoted to development of customized primer supports that's predominantly used for, for uh, synthesis of oligonucleotides, which is really something that's been around for a while, but we could see that it's becoming more and more popular again. So to summarize, the, the, the custom consumables offering from Cytiva today consists of four different groups. Uh, one group doing customization by process resin, another group working on customization for small pre-packed column, more for analytical purposes or process development. A third group working with these ready to process columns, which is more for clinical manufacturing and, and, and large scale manufacturing. And then the fourth group working with primer support, which are more focusing on the oligonucleotides. Fantastic. Thank you. It sounds like we've got lots of dedicated groups there. And uh, what other opportunities do you see around customization uh, for the future? And uh, what are the possible challenges uh, revolving that? It's, it's a very good question. I mean, if, if typically when you put customization on there, people get a little concerned that it's going to be very costly or time consuming, etc. But I, I think what's happening right now is that as this sort of business is maturing, uh, and, and it's also sort of putting new demands on us as suppliers to the market to come up with new products and, and we need to bring them to the market quickly. And I think the customization group, um, somehow the name can, kind of gives you the wrong impression that you're going to just make one customized product for one customer. But in reality, what would happen here during the last decade is that we started to work with one customer that had some sort of a specific challenge. And together with this customer, we would sort of set the specification around, let's say, a, a specific base matrix, a specific ligand, the ligand density. And together with that customer, we would bring that to the market. And, and usually the way we work here is that we, we kind of run that project free of charge. But then what we would like to ensure that we have the freedom to operate. So once we solve that for that specific customer, we typically make it available to every customer that potentially could be interested in, in that specific product, given a resin or a prepack column. And, and the reason why I think it's, it's extremely interesting right now is that we see all these new modalities coming into the market, you know, plasmid purification, mRNA, et cetera. And, and here again, I think the customized consumable group really could come up with quick solutions to, um, you know, whatever emerging demands that we see from our customers. 
And by that, you know, we will also bring these product to 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 the general use and ensuring that uh, medicines could come to the market more quickly. Yes, no, absolutely. I agree with you. I think the yeah, these emerging modalities are causing all sorts of problems. So I think if you can mm. share the knowledge um, to solve those issues, yeah, yeah absolutely. Medicine's going to go much further. Mm. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. And uh, can you mention a, a few custom projects uh, that give a high level of detail uh, as to what Cytiva can offer? Yeah, sure. I mean, during my, I think my 11 years that I was in that business, we brought something uh, like 25 different bioresins uh, or bioprocess resins to the market. And it's interesting because when you speak to customers and, and they see these resins, they said, well, you know, I had no idea they came from, from this sort of customized offering because again, you know, they became of general use. And, and one very good uh, example is a collaboration that we had with uh, Cobra Biologics in the UK recently. And uh, this is a CMO and, and uh, they work with a client that wanted to purify plasmids. And then Cobra worked with the legacy resin uh, from, from Cytiva uh, called Plasmid Select Extra. And in general, Cobra was happy with this resin, but you know, they said that it was kind of outdated in the sense that it didn't really deliver the, the productivity, the throughput, the process economy that Cobra was looking for, for, for modern processes. So what we did here was to team up with Cobra and, and we took that very same ligand that was on the legacy resin and we put it on a more modern capital platform that we could offer from Cytiva. And together with, with, with Cobra, we could really sort of nail down uh, the, the specification for that product and, and we could bring it to the market. And, and for Cobra, that meant a huge difference in terms of, um, again, you know, the, the throughput, the process economy and the productivity. So I think it was really a win-win situation. And then again, once it was launched, uh, we could offer that to, to the rest of the market and we've seen a, a very quick uptake also from other customers from this resin working with, with plasmid purification. And, and what's very appealing, I think, also with being in that custom consumable business is that you really get the sense of feeling that you work with the customer to, to you know, solve certain problems. And, and here we worked uh, closely with Tony Hitchcock at, at Cobra Biologics. And we also did or gave a, a, a webinar around what we did together. Where also Cobra could present, you know, some of their capabilities and, and findings from that collaboration. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for that example. And, uh, but uh, I assume that that can be quite costly and time consuming to run a custom custom project. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, we, I think we touched on that a little bit already. And, and, and typically when, when, you know, when you say that uh, it's going to be a custom project, you know, people go, oh, wow, that's, that's going to be very expensive. But as I mentioned before, in most cases, we would run that project free of charge. Given the fact that we mutually believe that there is a business opportunity for that, if it's a more high risk project or something which is truly custom for a specific customer, we would probably need to agree on some sort of a milestone payments. And, and very quickly, uh, the timelines, I, I think if everything runs very smoothly, we could um, we could go from a first discussion on what the customer is looking for to product on the market in, in something like, let's say one year to two years, a little bit depending also on the feedback uh, from the customer. Because the way it works or the way we operate is that the customer would have to share what the challenges are and we would try to see how we could solve that with our technologies then we would develop prototypes that we send to the customer and it's actually the customer that do the testing and based on you know if they like or let's say dislike the prototypes we need to sort of iterate that process to find that sweet spot where we could 
you know, feel comfortable making that resin, you know, every day of the week. And the customer should also be happy with that specification. And sometimes, you know, there's a little discussion around finding that sweet spot. But I think the quickest we've done uh, a resin that came to the market was something then again, we had projects that were ongoing for, you know, five years, but but it was more due to the customer not being able to maybe make up their mind uh, what they wanted to do with their, with our resin and also with their molecule. Maybe, you know, maybe it was paused in a clinical phase, et cetera. So roughly one to two years to, to bring something to the market for the resins, for the pre-packed columns, that's a completely different business. You know, you, you, you essentially ask what you want to have. If we can do it, it's going to happen within uh, weeks or months. It's more of a transactional business, whereas the bioprocess resin is more of a uh, longer term um, project or collaboration. Brilliant. No, thank you for taking us through that. And uh, well, where do you see these custom offerings heading in the future? I, I, I actually think they will become more and more um, important. So uh, we spoke about fast works way of working and, and that's essentially sort of testing the market very quickly with customers. If, if you go back, let's say one or two decades, I would say this business was very much R&D driven. R&D in, in our company would more or less decide on what products to bring to the market and uh, you know they would do the work and put uh, the product on the market. Today, uh, customers are very uh, skilled, they're very matured, they know what they want. And in, in many ways, we need to work closer with the customers to decide what products to do and how to set the specifications. And here I think that this, this custom consumable group is a perfect fit. They're fast, they're agile, and, and they have all the resources needed to, to run a project and to bring something to the market. And I would like to emphasize as well that once we bring something to the market, that product is like any other product from Cytiva in terms of you know, containing things like a regulatory support file, data files, documentation. So there's nothing, um, there's nothing strange with it, you know, and, and um, it's like any other product that you would acquire from us. So to summarize that question, I, I think given the, the need for high speed and flexibility uh, being asked from our customers, I think the custom consumables offering and way of working is is uh, essential fit for the future uh, for us to keep up with uh, demands from our customers. Fantastic, thank you. Well, thank you so much. So this has been BWB TV with Henrik Eero, Global Director of Strategic Customer Relations at Cytiva. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you.